This video is for those who think they are free. Well, you are free. But, you aren't free unless you realize when you are enslaved. Because that's how you achieve freedom in the first place. And through our experiences and through our history, we may become clearer as to knowing what freedom is, how to defend it, and what it means, what it gives us, all the creativity, all the potential, all the possibility. And we see it in art, we see it in creativity, we see it in every expression. Because if you weren't able to express, then you wouldn't be free. And that's exactly what it means to be free, is to be able to do what you want to do with your own property, so as you please, as long as you do not harm another person, so long as your acts are victimless. And so you must ask yourself, well, are, am, am I taking victimless acts? And well, by the day to day, we take a lot of victimless acts. Some people don't like. Others people like, and many victimless acts people have a lot of mixed feelings about. But the victim acts, such as murder, theft, assault, rape, trespass, coercion, uh, these people all generally see as wrong because they do create a victim. They are stealing someone's property. They are violating someone's rights. And so when we see that, that is a breach upon an individual's freedom. Those acts which create victims breach individuals' freedoms. They are acts of slavery because it's claiming the ownership of what should happen to somebody's life and destiny. You're saying this is your fate and I can choose it for you. I am your master. Now, not a lot of, not a lot of people see wrong actions or uh, forms of theft as forms of slavery, but if slavery is all about ownership and owning yourself, then we must question, am I in full ownership of myself? So, when you commit a victimless act in today's world, you have to ask yourself, how many people are in jail in today's world for victimless acts? Acts that do not harm another individual, but can potentially harm individuals. And who decides what is an act to be deemed as a crime that is victimless? I mean, gosh, it could be gambling, it could be drinking, right? It can be prostitution, but if it's all consensual, is there an issue with it? And you say, well, yeah, there's still issue here and there. I would agree with you, but guess what? Does it violate the rights of the individual? Does it breach upon somebody's ownership? So, if you say that you are free and can do so as you please with your life, try going against the system that you live in called government and see what happens even though you're not harming anyone, even though you're not creating a victim, and see what happens to you. Because these people will impose their will upon you with violence and the threat of violence through duress to coerce you against your own will while claiming that they have more rights than you. That is the exact same relationship as the slave master and the slave. The slave master says, I have more rights than you and I can tell you what to do with your own property. Those two conditions for you, the slave who is the person under them, who depends upon them. And what do we often look up to? We say government must fix our problems. We say it needs to write down on a piece of paper what we can do, and we need to get permission to go here and there. We need licenses and permits, hence permission, to do this or that. And yet we never look at the fact that the slaves back then had permission slips to go from plantation to plantation. They have the slave patrol with the same exact badges as the sh sheriffs and cops today have, uh, where they patrol the streets and find out who is not acting the way they should be, according to their own whim, according to their opinion. Because everything that man's law is, is opinion. It's man-made authority. Well, does any man have innate authority? Does any man have this ability that other human beings do not have that gives them that ability to do something that is wrong, seen as wrong by everybody else, but is seen as right because they do it, because they're authority, because they're wearing a badge, because they're wearing a uniform? Does that give them any more of a special privilege or right than anybody else? See, that's the thing. It's a privilege. It's not a right. Rights are natural. They come with us through our birth. We're born with rights because that is our ownership. It's something that we've always had for ourselves. 
I have the right to this body because this body belongs with me. I've always had it with me. You know, I must then be responsible for this right and exercise it through my freedom, through what these rights provide to me, through what my body provides to me. And that is essentially me showing my ownership, my responsibility. But if I'm not able to show proof of ownership, not able to be responsible for myself, am I f truly free? If other people have to be wholly responsible for me, if I say, well, you have to be responsible for something only I can be responsible for. People don't look at this scenario. They can't even comprehend the words I'm saying. And then you say that you're free just because a piece of paper says so, just because uh, a declaration says so, just because an anthem says so. But are you actually, in reality, what well, I said you are? And so what's keeping you from that is a mental belief called statism, this belief that other people can rule over your life, the belief that you need a slave master. You are creating your own enslavement because you are free. So the only person that is keeping you away from your own freedom is yourself. It's you not embracing honesty, not embracing reality, not embracing the truth of who you are by your nature, by your rights, and recognizing, well, wait, I am supposed to be free like any other animal in nature, and as human beings, we have a conscience, we just have to recognize we shouldn't harm another being, we should not steal something from another being. We need to recognize our time and place. If we hurt someone else, we're basically saying, I want to be hurt the same way. The golden rule, do unto others what you want done unto them right uh, done unto you so it's it's an, it's a relationship where if you do something to someone well you're opening up the potential that it's done to yourself you know if you are hiding something that is really important that other people need to know well you're essentially keeping them ignorant as well you're keeping them in the dark you're keeping the power away from their hands which can very well help empower them to become more free themselves and that's often what the elites do, the, the people in power do. You know, they keep this knowledge away from people. This very knowledge of, of ownership, of freedom, of rights. Yet while everybody wants to talk about politics and everybody wants to talk about news and what rises to the surface. Again, can you comprehend the things that I'm saying here? Because at a fundamental level, we're looking at universal and timeless truth. And that's why this information is more important than any other information out there currently in the world. And why this information is going to boundlessly you know, inevitably grow in the face of all evil and all tyranny ever to face this earth forever. And that is making a very large statement, but it's true because it's plagued humanity for so many years that we faced enslavement from the very foundations of government to the governments we have today that are claiming the ownership over all the land and all the property and all the people within said land that they claim to somehow own because of some piece of paper, because they wrote it, because they said so, because of their title, because of their position, because of their authority. Does that sound legitimate to you? Does that sound moral and right to you? You say, well, might makes right, no matter what violence is going to determine it. Well, does it actually make it right? Just because somebody can do something, does that make it, does that make it the truth? Does that make it what is? No, just because somebody can do something does not make it right. Just because somebody can convince others that something is right does not also make it right. And you know this at an instinctual, deeper, intuitive level, <clears throat> that what is right is something that you have to look through all the layers, all the illusions to find the truth, the honesty, the reality, the nature of the world we live in. And so we're wrapped in all these illusions and we don't know how to find our way. And the first path toward finding our way is finding ourselves. And finding ourselves, well, what is it? What is this thing we call ourselves? Well, it's ourselves. We own ourselves. If we don't own ourselves and we don't have ourselves, then what are we to look at? You know, if we don't have ourselves in control of ourselves, then why are we talking about everybody else and what they should do when we don't, we don't even have control over ourselves? <laughs> what hypocrisy. And so often do I see this in the world where people are constantly pointing fingers at everybody else. They don't want to point at themselves. They don't want to look at their own world, their own environment, what things could be changed, what people they can talk to, what connections could be made, what actions could be made. And it's not limited to politics. It's not limited to religion. It's not limited to culture. 
It's not limited to male, female, race, sex, gender, all this nonsense that you see constantly in the media, constantly in all forms of social media, and it's all just distracting people from their sense of morality, which all this comes down to because slavery is a moral issue. It's not a race issue, it's a moral issue. That's what it comes down to because I respect everybody as a human being, as an individual of, the, of their own, where they get to live their life as they so choose. I have have no right to mess with their life, to tell them how to live their life, to say how all the world should work. <clears throat> but yet people expect me to explain how the world would work with freedom. What do you mean? Freedom by definition means there is no one way for the whole world to work. Freedom by definition means embracing the world that we are given by nature without fear, because fear is what drives us to all confusion, to all ignorance, to all chaos. What has fear ever done for us any good other than escaping evil? But what evil are we escaping here but the evil that we ourselves have created? We fear ourselves. We fear our honest truth, our reality, the fact that we can be in ownership of ourselves, that we can be responsible for something, again, that only we can be responsible for? Well, we can't fear that. And once we embrace it, what is it? It's a practice. We gain practice over it. We can actually master it. And that's where self-mastery comes in. Now we have sovereignty, which means not a slave. It means above rulership. And what do we call the people who are in power, who are the kings or queens? We call them the sovereign, which means they're not the slave. Well, what does that make us? That makes us the slave. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to say that we're all not slaves because by nature, we're not born in shackles. We're not born signing pieces of paper. We're not born with certificates attached to our names with bonds and all this man-made stuff. No. We're born of nature, we're born of truth, of reality, of our parents, of our families, of ourselves, and we don't need these authorities, these third parties we don't know who are saying, well, you need to do this, you must do that, and if you don't, you must be com complied, and if you don't, you're going to be thrown into a cage. That is slavery. Again, being imposed upon against your will. You know, something you don't want to do, but you are either convinced into doing it because you are mentally enslaved, which is the worst form of slavery that inevitably leads to physical slavery, or you are straight up just physically enslaved, which is why so many people don't see the slavery today, because it's mental enslavement. It is something that takes place in their own mind that they personally create for themselves. And that's why even the slaves, when they were freed in the 1800s from physical slavery, overt physical slavery, they still had this mindset of, I'm in this system, I require permission to be free. This law says that I am still under this jurisdiction that claims ownership over my life and property. And Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison and Lysander Spooner and Henry Clark Wright and Josiah Warren and Jeremiah Hacker and all these abolitionists that people are not taught about in school on purpose were saying, no, these are other forms of slavery. They're saying these governments, they're still human authority. They're still claiming life and property that you own. They're claiming the ownership of it. And that is slavery. And for researchers and historians to all ignore this fact of the matter because they have not looked at the philosophical underlying means that we are not a society of knowledge, but a society of order following. A society where somebody says something, oh, so it must be true. Oh, this is how history is. Oh, so it must be true. Oh, the experts say this, so it must be true. Oh, don't question authority. Don't question what you're told. Stay in line in school and make sure you do go to school. And then make sure after you go to school, you go to more school or after you go to school, make sure you get a job and then make sure after you get a job that you uh, take care of your family and take care of yourself. But don't do this greater destiny for the world. Don't try to free humankind. Still get pillaged by the people who claim to rule over you and decide arbitrarily on their own opinion, their own whip, how much money to take from your salary and everything that you earn. And at any time, at any moment they choose, they can take anything from you, anything that you own, because that's the power they have. And should anybody in the world have that power, to take anything they want from you at any time so they choose because they have these order followers who are willing to submit and obey and carry out those orders. Does that sound right to you, that there's a bunch of people who are turning off their brains following orders for some few people who want to control all the rest of the masses? So is it really the, the small 1% of people who are telling others how to live their life, are they really the problem or is it the masses that follow them and then the masses that allow those other masses that follow them? 
because that that's us right there okay you may not be a policeman you may not be somebody who works for the government but guess what you're supporting the government if you're not speaking up against them you're supporting slavery if you're not speaking out about victimless crimes which are not crimes because no victim no crime if you're not harming anybody you're not creating a crime and how are crimes dealt with in a free world guess what tons of solutions tons of abilities why don't you do some research why don't you look into mises.org why don't you look into all the different forms of anarchism and all the solutions and all the abolitionists and their free worlds and, and towns that they were creating and how they got shut down by the government like lysander spooner setting up his own private postal office oh you can't do that because the u.s post office has to be in control and have a monopoly over all the mail even though he's a lawyer he knew the law at the time they still shut him down because they're the government and they still have people following their orders the government doesn't exist it exists in your mind and all these order followers believe that this government has this imagined power and so they must obey this imagined god called government and bow down and say yes i will do that even though i think it's wrong i'm not going to worry about that i'm just doing my duty i'm just doing my job oh why are you doing this to my business oh i'm just doing my duty i'm just doing my job oh sorry man i'm just doing my duty i'm just doing my job yeah, while you carry everybody to the concentration camps, to the gulags, and you cause democide, the number one cause of unnatural death. Nobody ever questions this scenario. Nobody ever looks at it deeper. And then you wonder why I have so many videos about it on my channel. And then you wonder why I have so much persistence about it and why I'm encouraging other people to speak about it. Because what it is is blatantly slavery. And so you are free in reality, but past all those illusions only. And once you realize those illusions, once you escape those illusions, that's the only way you become free. And once you are aware of what those illusions are, how those illusions may bind your freedom, that's how you maintain your freedom. You maintain your freedom just as you maintain your ownership. You recognize, I am supposed to be free, and this is how I'm free. By recognizing and acting and exercising upon my rights. And my rights are those actions which do not cause harm. My rights are those uh, aspects of my nature, which uh, constitute my ownership, that I cannot lose. Such as my ability to speak, such as my ability to act, such as my ability to breathe, to talk. Right, All these things to uh, freely think, ultimately, that is an expression of freedom. And slavery wants to limit anything that freedom provides, because slavery is the complete anti antithesis of freedom. It is completely antithetical to freedom. It is what basically is tyranny. Tyranny is the result of government gone corrupt. Well, what is government not corrupt, not tyrannical? Well, it's becoming more corrupt, becoming more tyrannical, because as this theory has shown, you cannot limit government. I put out a whole documentary about that. I put out a whole documentary about every single subject. Do people care? Well, if they would care about humanity, if they care to look into it, but no, it's all been debunked. Oh, no, this is all impossible. This is all just a, a fuzzy dream. Oh, freedom isn't possible. We can't embrace freedom. We must be enslaved to some extent. It's a necessary evil. Well, then why call it evil? Nobody ever questions their own reality, their own thinking, and that's why they enslave themselves and will perpetually enslave themselves until they realize the utter truth that destiny and nature provides to them. Thank you very much for watching. This is Corey Angelot. Imagine freedom if you want to create it, and imagine it without fear. Don't let fear restrict your imagination, because anything is possible when you set your mind to it. And freedom is possible because it is our reality. We've been kept away from that reality, and that's why everything that's happened to us has been chaos on repeat, over and over and over again, until we learn the lesson that government is not sustainable, and will always rise and always fall and result in democide. It is slavery, it has been since its very foundations, and all the acts it does is slavery. If it's not, then it's not government, it's a voluntary world, a world free from coercion against people's wills, a world where people are obligated to talk about morality, where people are obligated to be responsible, where people are on the look for people who are deceiving others, where there's so many solutions ever, where people are not abdicating their own responsibility and giving it over to some group or select group of individuals claiming that they have more rights than them. All these things would happen in the free world. And that is a beautiful world. It's an optimal world. It's not one that's perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. But that's the closest thing you can get because the human destiny is, lives with that truth. Thank you.